Okay, in this video, we're going to look at a source couple pair with a current mirror load. And specifically, we're first going to find the differential mode gain, and then we're going to find the common load gain. Now here, you can see that we've taken our source couple pair consisting of M1 and M2, and we've used a PMOS current mirror consisting of M3 and M4 to act as an active load. Now, the reason we're doing this is much the same reason that we looked at active loads for single-ended amplifiers before. We're going to assume that we have symmetry. In other words, M1 is equal to M2 and M3 is equal to M4. And we know, as always, that our voltage gain, AV, is equal to minus GM times RT. Now, we are first going to find GM. We know that because of symmetry, big GM is equal to big GM2. And for the reasons that we had outlined in prior videos, that we need to find the resistance that the source of M1 sees. So we're going to look from the source of M1 towards M2. And we know that we have some tail current source that's flowing current through these two devices. And we've generally been treating RS like it's a very big resistor, at least for the time being. Now, this being the case, we know that looking towards the source of M2, we would see 1 over GM2, and we could write that big GM1 is equal to big GM2 is equal to GM1 or 2 divided by 1 plus GM1 or 2 divided by GM1 or 2. In other words, we can say that our big GM is equal to little GM1, 2, divided by 2. Now, next, we need to find the total resistance seen at the load. So we're going to add a test voltage source, P e sub x, and we're going to measure the current, I sub x, that flows through the test source. And ultimately, we know that we're going to find a resistance looking this way and a resistance looking this way. Now, I'm going to call the resistance looking towards M4 R looking up and the resistance looking towards M2 R looking down. So for RT, let's write a KCL expression at the output node. We can say that IX is equal to Vx divided by R looking down plus Vx divided by R looking up. And what we need to know here is that if we create a current due to Vx and R down, the current isn't going to want to flow into the high impedance current source. It's going to want to flow into the source of M1, which is low impedance, and ultimately into this current mirror, uh, uh, the diode-connected M3. Now, if it flows into the diode-connected M3, it's going to get mirrored over into M4. So these currents are linked together. Ultimately, what this means is that we get a second Vx R down. Or Vx divided by R down. Okay, so what is R looking up? R looking up is just the output resistance of M4. In other words, RO4. What is R down? It is equal to RO2 times 1 plus GM2 times. 1 over GM1. In other words, our dollar sign for M2 is equal to 1 over GM1. Now we know that because GM1 and GM2 are equal to one another, they cancel, and ultimately we find that R looking down is equal to 2 times RO2. All right, so let's make our substitutions into our R total equation. 
All right, so when we make our substitutions into our KCL equation that we wrote at R, at, for it to find RT, we find that VX over IX is equal to RO2 in parallel with RO4. Now, it's important to realize that this is probably what we would have expected, but it happens because of the current mirror action that produces a replica of VX over R down. So we get ultimately two VX over R down currents. Now we can put everything together and find our differential mode voltage gain. So we can use superposition and find the contribution from the from the one input terminal and the contribution from the other input terminal, and ultimately we find our differential mode voltage gain is equal to, uh, to GM1 or 2 times RO2 in parallel with RO4. Now, as expected, this is quite a large number. In fact, it's approaching an intrinsic gain for a single device much like we saw in our single-ended amplifiers. Now note, we aren't drawing a sign for our differential mode voltage gain here because it depends upon the polarity that we use at the input terminals. So this is really just the magnitude of the gain. All right, so we're gonna stop for this video. And in the next video, we're going to find the common mode voltage gain.